Greetings, my excellent friends. You've got the Hobby Drifter here once again. And as you probably know from my typical greeting, this is very exciting. This just arrived a few moments ago, all the way from 1991. Possibly by means of time travel, definitely by means of Kuro Neko Yamato. It arrived uh, about a week and a half ahead of its anticipated delivery date, which is most triumphant. It is a sealed box of Bill and Ted's most atypical movie cards. This box contains 36 packs, each of which have 10 cards in them, and there is a total of 100 cards in the set, and I don't believe there are any chase cards or anything like that. So without any further ado, I am going to just dig into this. Let's have a look at the box first. Uses the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure uh, artwork from Pro Set. Uh, you can win a bodacious trip to San Dimas, California, or some other non-bogus prize. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably uh, long gone. Yeah, the uh, cards feature art from the, uh, the original two Bill and Ted movies, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Uh, here's the lengthy instant win rules for that. And the bottom of the box, just 1991 Pro Set. 1991 Orion Pictures Corporation. 1991 Nelson Films Inc. All Rights Reserved. I had like one pack of these back in like 1991, 1992. Um, I don't think I even bought the pack. I think just a friend of mine had, had bought them uh, and I wound up with them in a trade. So I don't think I've ever actually even seen what the packs look like. The box itself shipped in a padded envelope, which if I really cared about the uh, value or anything of this, I might have been annoyed at some of the the damage done to you know the the box, but I'm not, so I don't really care. Uh, let's pull that back a little bit, and we can see the original display box. How cool is that? Very, very cool. Look how deep that is. It's just deep as hell. Um, I'm used to seeing boxes of cards now, like, you know, for, for Pokemon and stuff at, uh, for sale at 7-Eleven that are, like, tiny. Like, the, the box only has, like, 10 packs in it. And I don't think each pack has 10 cards anymore. But, like, this is this is huge. This is a perfect uh, definition, or a perfect opportunity to use a Japanese word uh, that I am a big fan of, uh, otonagai, which is uh, a adult purchase. It's like when you're a kid, you buy one pack or two packs of something, but when you're an adult, you can do otonagai and buy buy the entire uh, the entire box. Um, this entire box, even after shipping, probably cost less than it would have in 1991. This was not an expensive purchase for me uh, or for anyone. I think it wound up at about 40 bucks. Um, and I'm guessing each of these probably cost about a dollar or two dollars back in uh, 1991. Get a couple of these packs out of here. So there we go. We got Bill and Ted's most atypical movie cards win a bodacious trip to San Dimas, California, or some other non-bogus prize. For a free Bill and Ted movie card checklist and pro set gazette merchandise catalog, send your name and address to this place. And then we got uh, top quality cotton Bill and Ted t-shirts can be yours for only $8.95 plus $3 shipping and handling, a total of $11.95. Thank you for that. Uh, with each t-shirt order, you'll receive a free pair of Pro Set sunglasses. Texas residents add 8.25 sales tax to all orders. Alaska, Hawaii, and Canada residents add $5 to the total shipping and handling charge. U.S. currency, 
please. Oh, that takes me back. All right, crack the first pack. I wanted to do one of these card videos again for a while. Um, especially just like with the with, with the box. The uh, the ones I did with the Vanguard cards were fun, but it was just like a pile of stuff from a store. It wasn't, you know, like the, the sealed box. All right, so that's cool. The, the first card off the top is the title card of the set from uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Card number, I'm guessing, yeah. Card number one, and we've got Bill and Ted speak to English pool game, Marco Polo, the fruit, okay, that's, that is cute, alright, so there's card number one of one, speaking of the fruit dude, there's uh, Sigmund Freud and Socrates, and having seen this movie at such a young age, I absolutely did think they were named Sigmund Freud and Socrates for a long time, like when we first, like, mentioned these guys in, like, junior high, and I was like, oh yeah, Socrates, and they're like, no, 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 that's, it's Socrates. Card 31. Napoleon is ditched by Deacon and finds his way to the Waterloo. Meanwhile, all the other historical dudes are experiencing life in San Dimas at the mall. Excellent. Bogus. Incredibly nostalgic. I'm just taking a sec to get some of the schmutz off my desk here. So I can lay these down flat. Alright, then we got. Uh, that is very 80s. wonder how they picked out some of these these cards. Like how they picked out the artwork for them. Like did they just have a bunch of art ready to go? Or did they go through and you know, have the, the, the frames of the movie, did they go through frame by frame and pick the best shots? Like, what was... what was the, uh... the way of thinking here? Probably worth noting that, uh... not all of these pictures are particularly exciting. Which is... Kind of an interesting way to go. Oh, here's our first card from uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Just a shot of the characters from the back for some reason. But there is a hundred of these cards. I'm guessing it's going to be like the first 50 or Excellent Adventure. The second 50 are Bogus Journey. Ah, uh, there we go. There's Napoleon. tagline of the first movie was uh, history is about to be rewritten by two guys who can't spell which I always thought was just very, even as a, a kid I thought that was very clever uh, the good robot Bill and Ted good robots Bill and Ted yeah, I definitely had this card as a kid, I don't know <laughs> exactly why that one stuck in my memory yeah, uh, but it but it did, and this was one of the ones I had as a kid. Card eighty-eight. Good robots, Bill and Ted save the babes as they almost come crashing down on the stage. And then here's the uh, here's the card inside. Have your own excellent adventure. Win instantly from Pro Set. A bodacious trip to San Dimas, California, or some other non-bogus prize. Uh, and it is a uh, scratch-off card. 
I'm not gonna scratch all of these right now. That would be an interesting thing to find out that, you know, this 32 year old set of cards would have netted the Hobby Drifter a trip to, uh, to San Dimas, California back in the day. But, uh, maybe we're just better off not knowing. All right, so cool. We got uh, 10 cards there. No doubles as of yet. Uh, I did buy a, a box of Spider-Man cards back in 92, 93, and I did get each pack. Each pack had uh, doubles in the, uh, in like the same pack. So you'd have like, you know, eight cards in a pack, but there would only be four unique ones. All right, so we got another Bogus Journey cards with uh, the good robots and the bad robots. That's card number 90, by the way. And another Bogus Journey card. That's a good shot of the, of the guys up on stage. Card, uh, card 55, which definitely goes with my theory of how these are split up. This is another one. I definitely had this when I was... I had this one as a kid. It was like my my reference picture for when I would draw Keanu Reeves' Ted. There's Denomalos. It is time. The evil Denomalos is out to change the destiny of wild stallions. And uh, didn't find out until they were doing Bill and Ted 3 and I started following Ed Solomon on, uh, on Twitter. That, uh, that the name Denomalos is just Ed Solomon backwards. <laughs> that's that, that's a cool, that's a cool thing. Although uh, this is card 48 from Bogus Journey, which means that it's not a distinct 50-50 split. First shot of uh, George Carlin here. Oh, this is just a great shot. Of uh, Bill and Ted and the princesses, kind of annoyed they recast them for the for Bill and Ted three, and like you you know why they did, but it's it's gross. Uh, there we go, the the end of Bogus Journey with the uh, fast eighteen months of guitar training that kind of wrecks the whole. The clock in San Dimas is always going. Oh, Genghis Khan. I don't know if this was a shot from the movie or like a backstage thing, but that's, that is a good picture. Like if, I, if I was going to have like a, a card framed, it would be that one. Oh, it, oh, I guess if I were to like just read the, the corner, you know, the behind the scenes outtakes. That, uh, that would make sense. Oh, there we go. The uh, scene where Bill thinks Ted has died because he somehow fell out of his armor. Which, even as like an eight-year-old, I was like, how the hell did that happen? Um, yeah, that, that one, the one, the one bit of Bill and Ted that hasn't aged well. That, uh, that one particular line. Which, uh, they kind of doubled down on in the sequel. Bogus. All right, two packs in, no doubles. Here is pack number three. I love just the the feel and the sound of these packs. They're they're not at all the same as uh, what modern card packs feel like. I mean, I don't know if that's just, you know, age or whatever, but they have a, a very different feel to them from, like, you know, opening modern, uh, like, Pokemon or Vanguard packs or what have you. There's old Honest Abe Lincoln.
There's Bill multitasking. Evil Bill and Ted plan to waste the babes after the concerts, but in the meantime, they trash the apartment. Station. So it's not so much multitasking, it's just, you know, being a dick. Now, here's the uh, title card for Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Card number 47, by the way. I'm having a hard time parsing what exactly I'm looking at here. A demon guard forces sledgehammers upon Bill and Ted. They find this most non-non-non-triumphant. After Ted totally breaks a rock, he kind of likes it as Bill and Ted inquire how they can get back to San Dimas. The demon guard totally pulls a rat out of his mouth. Cool. I forget which one of their moms this is at this point. Imagine just seeing this picture. Like, that is haunting. Future dudes. Their presentation, like the presentation in the movies, I, it was it was so awesome. But like the thing that always bugged me, because you know just just the way I am, uh, how exactly like they figured out like the lighting cues and the music and stuff. Like that's that's what always threw me. That that's the kind of stuff that no one cares about, but like drives me crazy. Circle K. We used to have Circle K. I think Circle Ks are all gone in Japan now. Like when I first uh, got here and I saw like a couple of Circle K places, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta go hang out there. And everyone thought I was lamer than I really am. But not by much. Love that they brought Missy back for, for Bill and Ted 3. Like the actual actress who played Missy. Like they, they recast the, the princesses, but they, they kept Missy around. Uh, which just lent it a lot of uh, credibility, I think. It was great seeing her again. Okay, three packs in. Still no doubles. Look at pack number four. And I am trying to open these packs fairly nicely, just so that I can you know, have uh, a couple to, to keep in the display box. I say that, but then I just went and just completely ripped the hell out of this one. So let's do it. And the Bill and Ted in Hell stuff was just creepy as shit. <laughs> like uh, that—that that was a, a fun take on Hell. Although it was—I uh, I remember like, even watching Bill and Ted in the theater and hearing, you know, the. The, the voice of, of Satan and thinking like, oh, that's that's Dr. Claw. It might be one of the, the first voice actors I, I recognized from something else. The, the hell scenes were just so cool in, in Bogus Journey. Like, they had really no right looking that cool. Where did they get the money for this? Like they bought enough hardware to build good robot Bill and Ted's, but like you gotta figure that would have cost more than their credit limits, right? This this scene shocked the hell out of me that they just straight up like killed Bill and Ted uh, early on in the in Bill and Ted too. Like I thought for sure there would be you know some kind of MacGuffin or something, but no, they just straight up died. 
with a behind the scenes outtake with the phone booth. And this, by the way, is card number 100. There's Genghis Khan, which I believe now is going to be our first double of the set so far. Oh, no. No, it's not. This is a slightly different Genghis Khan card. Oh, great shot. Much cooler shot than, you know, the just the three of them from behind. Ted's statue. Yeah, I really thought that uh, they would have a hard time explaining how, you know, just Bill and Ted's music brought everyone together in Bill and Ted 3, but the way that they did it was, I thought, was inspired. Truly inspired. Because, um, I mean, there was never going to be just, like, a song that did it, but the way that they, they explained it away in the movie was just really, really fun. I, I thought that was just great. Um, yeah, some of these these Mylar uh, packages are not surviving terribly well. Uh, all right, so we got uh, Death, the Grim Reaper. Wonder if this dude knows he's a trading card. <laughs> hey. Just, you know, the, the guy who played uh, Mr. Ryan in, like, a little bit of uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I wonder if, if he knows he's got, like, a trading card. If it, if it were me, I would have, like, like, just binders full of that one trading card to, like, show off to people. I wonder if he does conventions. That'd, that'd be a cool thing to get signed. I think a lot of these things would be cool to get signed by a lot of these guys. underappreciated bit of uh, hilarity that they, they choose these like board games to play against death it would have been fun to, to show that like he actually had these these games ready to go just in case somebody was going to uh, challenge him or you know another fun scene would have been like them going out to like get them <laughs> there's Abe again found out that uh, his the actor who played Lincoln uh, did pass away quite a while ago that's a lot of the, uh, the, the Bill and Ted uh, historical dudes. That's a great picture. That is a great picture. I like that, you know, the, the Bill and Ted movies are supposed to be, you know, just fun, dumb movies with heart, and they are that to a T. Um, they don't try to really explain a lot of the how and whys of time travel or whatever you're just supposed to enjoy it and I I, I did um, I, I feel like a lot of movies can get more bogged down and that kind of stuff and it takes away a lot of the fun but I might be alone in that because there are quite a few people who that seems to be what they do enjoy about this stuff like the the minutia and the lore so like, like this dude, this this random cop uh, that's in here. Like, do, do you think he has just stacks of this card to sign at you know Comic Con or whatever? Or is that just me? It's just me thinking, oh, that would be a great idea, and then everyone else goes, yeah, you're a dumbass. It can be two things. It can be cool, and I can be a dumbass. Don't pigeonhole yourself. <laughs> this, this, this was just nuts. Just like the peeling off the the skin thing. I don't know if that made it into the the movie, but it was in all of like the the comics and the movie novelizations and such. Um, I mean, this is from from the outtakes. Back before easy access to home media, you know, that's what we had to make do with, with you know, trading card sets, comic book adaptations, 
the official movie novelizations, which oftentimes were written by, you know, incredibly prolific authors. Though I don't know that the, the Bill and Ted one was, in fact, written by someone uh, so prolific. Squad goals. And Genghis got a bunch of cars, didn't he? Definitely had this one as a kid, too. She reminded me of uh, how a, a relative looked. I was like, oh, I wonder if, wonder if that's like her, her side job, if she's an actress on the side. And, uh, no. No, she wasn't. Eh, uh, Missy. I mean, mom. I mean, no. Missy. Another fun Napoleon card. Uh, admit it. You saw him eat this, like the, the Ziggy Pig thing, and you thought, oh, that would be awesome. I want to try that. They have things like that at different cafes here in Japan, and I'm sure worldwide as well. Um, like, you know, 4,000 yen, 5,000 yen. Um, and I don't know if there's like any kind of reward for eating it, but I feel like I would wind up talking to this guy pretty quickly uh, after I attempted it at my age, so yeah, probably not. Fun little escape scene, just, just Socrates and Billy the Kid with Bill and Ted in the phone booth, uh, riding away from some, uh, some danger. Fun times. I forget what's going on here. They're playing, like, basketball with his head or some shit, right? Yeah. Oh, hey, how about that? We got a card of the, uh, the cartoon series, too. Excellent. It's card number uh, 96 in the set. We got Bill and Ted's star is the most atypical and non-bogus cartoon characters ever. Bag it on Fox Television this fall. I will. I will bag it on Fox Television this fall. Alright, so to my knowledge here, we have yet to uh, encounter even a single uh, double. Let's see if I can uh, ruin that streak with this pack number one, two, three, four, five, seven. Pack number seven. Lucky number seven. Unlucky number seven. Another awesome shot there. Card 37. The second funniest number. Maybe it's time we got Eddie Van Halen. Maybe it's time we learned how to play. <laughs> that, was, that was deep. When when Ted's like, yeah, maybe we should just stop uh, all this goofy shit and actually learn how to play our instruments. There you go. Perfect, perfect card to get signed by the actor if you ever met him. The chores are completed and the historical figures pile into the car. Reasonably sure I had this one as a kid, too. Because that was another one that was I probably used for drawing reference quite a bit. Definitely had that one as well. Weird that that's not in the uh, 
behind the scenes outtakes. I'm guessing that's the last one of the Excellent Adventure series. And just jamming. Wonder who did that artwork, like the Wild Stallions thing. I mean, like Bill and Ted, they didn't have any money to like pay someone to do it, but they also didn't have any kind of like appreciable artistic skills. So like, I don't know how exactly that would have uh, wound up being uh, a thing. All right, now we're into pack number eight, and still no. Uh, no doubles, which is worrying. When I did the uh, the Evangelion card box a couple of years back, the box itself was very clear that uh, you should not expect a, a full set of cards uh, in this one box. And at this point, I'm wondering if I'm going to. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if I'm going to have just like you know, one card missing, and I'm going to have to go through, like, the other 20-something packs. Anomalous and Rufus. Love the, the military school thing. It's like, if you don't, if you don't get your grades up, you're going to military school. Could you, could you have imagined Ted in military school? I don't think that would have gone well for, like, literally anybody. That's gross. <laughs> that's just... That's just straight-up gross. Alright, let me get... the booth at the event. Death and Station, which... <laughs> like station along with the the three seashells thing from Demolition Man was like the the thing that you know kids of my generation would always talk about like what does station actually mean like, what do the three seashells really do how would you so Bill and Ted were supposed to be like significantly underage right like they were they were supposed to be. Well, I think they're probably in 18, so smoking wouldn't have been out for him. I read somewhere once that, like, they had to, like, be very specific that they weren't stoners. But that might have just been something I picked up along the way. What a great shot. You got uh, Mozart, Billy the Kid, Ted, and Sigmund Freud all together. Who would have thought that those guys would have ever had time for one another? Alright, so let's grab another couple of packs out of the box here. Still, still to the best of my knowledge, no, no doubles. I'm wondering if the reason that like this particular set of cards has just been sitting around in a warehouse for 30 years is because there are no chase cards. Like if there were chase cards, there probably would have been people, you know, buying up cases trying to get that particular set. But uh, you know, in the absence of chase cards, there's really no point to it, is there? Ted's dead. It could have gotten a slightly better picture of that. I 
know that he's still around and doing stuff, so I don't know that uh, that would have been the card I would want people bringing me to sign at Comic-Con and what have you. Take it on the run. Ah, uh, George Carlin. He popped up in the weirdest places. You know, Bill and Ted. He was in the Bill and Ted cartoon show for season one. It's like Mr. Conductor at like Shining Time Station. Just the dude got around. Got around to like right here, where he's playing more just George Carlin than you know Rufus. See, there's a, there's a better picture of uh, was it Captain Logan? Bill pretending to be Deputy Van Halen <laughs> most triumphantly lures Ted's dad out of the house so Bill and Ted can continue their most excellent adventure. This is Mr. Van Halen. Oh, right. Yeah. That was a thing. So I mentioned that I, you know, I saw Bill and Ted's, you know, the three Bill and Ted movies, both of the... Uh, cartoon shows from Saturday morning. I've never seen this. Uh, this is the uh, station Bill and Ted make it to a most unrivaled primetime television series. Check it out on Fox Television. I've only ever seen a few clips of this, even when it was on, like when it was, you know, in its first run uh, on TV. I would watch, like, when I would just because it, it would always change times. <laughs> it would always, you know, be on like a different time. It's like if I'd be flipping through channels, I was like, oh, here's the Bill and Ted show. And it was just, yeah, yeah, no. Just, it was not very good. Off with their heads. Put them in the Iron Maiden. Execute them. Okay, I think this is a, this is a double, right? <laughs> We've seen this one already. Yeah. Right? Maybe not. I am, uh, I am not, uh, <laughs> kick me son. Uh, yeah, I am maintaining hope that I'm going to wind up with a, a full set of these in just a couple of packs. God, I miss malls. <laughs> like, malls are still, you know, they're not dead in, in Japan, but they are not what they used to be uh, in in the U.S. and Canada, like back in the day. They're not, they're not even close to anything as, as cool as what we had. Like, there, there's no, at least at the moment, you know, there, there's no... Japanese mall culture like you, you, you wouldn't do like a uh, like a Japanese mall rats remake that that would just make no sense yeah 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 shut up <laughs> all right we got death great shot of death by the way and that one is a double this is this we have seen this one already There we go. Now we're getting into into the double sphere. Excellent. Ew. Wait, is this the exact same package of cards as the last one? Is that like two of those in a row? I'll have to go back and check that. All right. Well, let's let's have a look. See how we're doing on cards up to now. Put some of these in order. So we got nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Alright, 
there's the first nine. Hope I've picked some decent uh, waiting music for this video, so it's not just silence with my squeaky chair here. Missing a few from the second ten. looking like, if I've got my math right, and you can never really assume that, because math is not kind of my deal, that uh, there's probably about 10 cards missing so far, which uh, means that there's probably one type of pack that I need to complete this particular set, if I'm to understand this correctly, that... Uh, the cards are inserted in a specific way. Which I'm guessing is not how that's done any longer, right? I mean, that's probably not, not a thing. Forty-seven, forty-six, forty-four, forty-three, forty-two, forty-one, forty. So I'm missing forty-five there. Then we got twenty-one, twenty-seven, twenty-four, fifty-nine, fifty-eight, fifty-two. Fifty-nine, fifty-eight, fifty-seven, fifty-six, fifty-five, fifty-four, fifty-three, fifty-two, fifty-one, fifty-five, fifty-four, fifty-three, fifty-two, fifty-one. Into the sixties. Seven, sixty-six, sixty-five, sixty-four, sixty-three, sixty-two, sixty-one, sixty. Missing sixty-nine. Oh man, that's not cool. Well, that's not cool at all. <laughs> Imagine if that's like one of the cards that's missing from the set. Sixty-nine, dude. Oh man, 
That would be most non-triumphant. A lot of those license things like this, I wind up seeing the phrase non-bogus pop up a lot. And I don't think that's ever said in the movies themselves. So it always kind of stood out to me. Also, the whole non 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 heinous thing, where it's like, oh, uh, let me just count that. Because I, th I think there's like at least one instance in either the comics or the movie where they got it wrong. 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 70. Seven, eighty-six, eighty-four, eighty-three, eighty-one. All right, missing a couple of the eighties there, and nineties to a hundred. All right, so we're missing just a couple of cards here, which means if we find like one pack that has a bunch of stuff we haven't seen before, probably we'll finish up the set. Let's do it to it. Look, uh, look newer. All right, we got sixty nine dudes. All right, let's see if these do, in fact, plug in where they need to go. All right, so this stack here was missing a few so we got uh, 19 17 16 15 14 missing 13 and 18 here we have 18 yes we get 13 as well no all right so these are not packed in that particular w oh wait 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 we did 13 and 11 We're already in there we got 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 10 all right Meaning, 1 through 19, finished. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. Up to 29, finished. Let's get into the 30s. 39. 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30. Up through the 30s. Finished. Yes. 49, 48, 47, 46, 44. Do we have a 45 in that last pack? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, up through 49, done. That's half the series, folks, half the series. 
Excellent. 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, but 50 was in that last pack, yes. Meaning we're up to 59. The set is almost, almost complete. Huzzah! There is a spider on my wall that is looking like it wants to join the video. Be cool, spider dude. 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60. And we just had 69 here somewhere. There it is. 69 dudes there's our spider just spidering along there he goes there he goes the hobby drifter does not kill spiders they take care of the pests they are the good bugs the hobby drifters cats Konami and Andy on the other hand they do not share my uh, view of these things. Alright. 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, up through 79. Done. Let's get into the 80s. 89, 88, 87, 86, 80. Ooh, do we have an 85? We do. Well, that doesn't look to be a good time, does it? 84, 83. Do we have an 82? An 82? No. No 82 yet. Missing 82. How are we missing 82? I thought I had 82 in here already. All right, so we're still missing card number 82. Let's get into the 90s and 100. Yeah, 100, 99. We have 98. We do. 98. Excellent shot of Bill and Ted. 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90. So it looks like the only card we are missing is card number 80. 82. 82. Unfortunately, we have a whole lot more of these to get through. Whole lot more packs. Card 82. I wish I had a, a checklist so I could see just what that card is. That card 82. It is a Bogus Journey card, somewhere from the uh, the concert itself. All right, we're down to one card we're missing. Let's keep it loose. Seven, seventy-six, thirty-four, sixty-five, thirty-nine, four, thirty-one, thirty-seven. And still, still no eighty-two. I'm gonna, if I get through all 36 of these packs and I find out that this is like a 
an error from 91 where they just didn't make card number 82, I'm going to be most displeased. 97, 22, 94, 56, 80, 48, 40, 55, 54, 13, bogus. Imagining myself going online and paying like five dollars to get that one card. I only have I've only done that like one other time where it's just like I bought how many packs of this crap and not gotten what I need. Alright. 88, 6, 42, 17, 87, 25, 66, 47, 63, 64. No! Still no. That is a creepy looking card. And it's also card number 82! Yes! <laughs> like I would I would have noticed that. I would have been <laughs> I would have been like, oh, I would have made some some smart ass comment about that one. Uh, and it popped up before. All right, so we now have a full set. Let me just do one little check here real quick, because I think there was one. Yeah, this one. I noticed when I was opening it up that I had one, one card that didn't look to be in perfect shape. I'm going to swap that one out now. Hey. Here we go. Boom. There it is. The full set of 1991 Pro Set Bill and Ted's Most Atypical Movie Cards. Not bad. Did one, one half of the box to get a full set and then a couple of doubles. Uh, I guess while we're here, though, might as well take a look and see like what the other cards in that uh, in that last pack were this would be a cool card to get signed by all three of them but I mean <laughs> the odds of them ever doing a, a signing is slim to none And since this was the uh, the lucky pack, how about if we uh, take a look and see? Well, I was gonna scratch this off to see if it uh, was a winner, but if you hold it up to the light, you can tell uh, you can tell that it says "Sorry, dude." So, yeah, no luck. Let's take a look at some of these other ones. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Try again. The fact that there are still sealed cases of this set leads me to believe that there are quite a few of these uh, these cards around so I wouldn't be surprised if you know none of them were even like you know win a pack of cards or something sorry dude sorry dude sorry dude
Sorry, dude. Which lottery uh, like scratch offs had? Uh, you could just hold them up to the light like this. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. I wonder if anyone ever did wind up claiming this prize. Sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. You know, what, two more of these? Hmm. Sorry, dude. And last one. Sorry, dude. All right, so all of them are sorry, dudes. So we had to go through, uh, what does this look like? Uh, what is that? So 18. So we had to go through 16 packs to get a full set, meaning that there's probably still a full set of cards in this box. Probably just going to leave these sealed. I'll wind up gifting them to, to people somewhere down the line. Uh, maybe they'll have better luck with the, the scratch-off cards than I did. But still, this does make a cool little display box. Um, if I go through with my um, 80s and 90s display uh, section, this will be a cool thing to, to have just, well, I mean, on display. So... That's it. 1991 Bill and Ted's Most Atypical Movie Cards from 1991. Full set acquired. Most triumphant. I'm going to go out and get some uh, get some uh, card protectors for these so I can have my set uh, nice and minty for the rest of my life. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, if you made it to this part of the video, um, Thanks a lot. Uh, be sure to check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to leave a comment somewhere on the, you know, comment section, uh, it's usually, usually uh, very much appreciated. Thank you all very much. Uh, take care. Take care of yourselves. Um, happy hobbying. <laughs>